If you have your Bibles, let's open our Bibles to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, uh, chapter 1. Uh, last Sunday I shared, initially I, I, I opened the subject of faith-filled living and how do we live by faith? And oftentimes, in fact, I even asked you the question, where would you go to work out about faith-filled living? And most of you said, yes, Hebrews chapter 11. And that's true. That's where the heroes of faith are, are listed in Hebrews chapter 11. And I said that before you actually get to Hebrews chapter 11, you need to go through the first and second book of Thessalonians. Remember, the Bible says, Paul the Apostle said that in, in 1 Corinthians 13, he said that these three things remain after everything else is gone, love, uh, faith, hope, and love, those three, and the greatest is love. And then we went into the book of Thessalonians, and in chapter 1, we read that uh, uh, the Apostle Paul writes this, he says, we remember before our God and Father, your work produced by faith, your labor prompted by love, and your endurance inspired by hope. And so there is those three things again, faith, hope, and love. And the fact is that those three things are so interrelated. We often talk about, well, yes, I need to have faith. I need to have endurance and everything else. I need to have hope. But as, as our worship team, they, I mean, uh, uh, Basil wasn't even here last two Sundays. So he hadn't actually heard my message last Sunday and how I talked about the importance of love and and how important it is to have the, the uh, faith and love and hope work together. And so, <clears throat> so we, we actually uh, realize that these three things work together. And I mentioned last Sunday about in verse 8 of 1 Thessalonians 1, I, saw, I, I shared with you about the Lord's message rang out from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, your faith in God has become known everywhere. Your faith in who? God. In in God, you see, your faith is not in things. Your faith is not in, in, in yourself so much. Your faith is in a God who is able to do immeasurably more than you can ever even imagine or think. That's who our faith is in. And so when we are grounded in faith, we're grounded in something that the Bible is so clear that with faith all things are possible, but with faith in God, not in faith in ourselves or in our abilities. I said last week, it's not in education, it's not in money, it's not in position, it's not in anything else except in God. Our faith in God. And so then we, we, we mentioned a few things last week. I won't go back over that message, but I wanted to go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 because I think that for one thing, as, as we have the, we, the foundations are there now, let's go into about our faith growing and having our life filled with faith. So it goes in one Thess 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 3, it says, we ought always to thank God for you, brothers. So it's on the screen if you, if you haven't got your Bibles with you. It says, we all ought always to thank God for you, brothers and sisters, and rightly so, because your faith is growing. Faith is what? Wow. It's growing more and more, and the love you have for one another is increasing. And as I was listening to Basil, he was saying how the love of a communion, how, how our love for each other, how important that we need to love one another. And so oftentimes, yes, we, have, we come to church and sometimes we love different people and we have, uh, we have this sense of, oh, well, I believe in each other, but I, you, you don't, your faith is not in God. Your faith is in some people that you, are, that you are come to see in church. And sometimes we come to church to mix, mix with our friends instead of coming to meet with God, instead of coming to feel His presence and sense His presence around us, you know, we come and catch up with our mates. And, and so let's, let's have a party as we sing songs together, as we, as we love one another. But, so these three things are so intertwined. I know that in some places, people actually go to church because of the pastor. Maybe not in this case, but the fact is that you say, oh, no, I come to church because I want to meet with so-and-so, I want to meet with so-and-so. 
friends, we come to church so we can experience the corporate worship, so we can experience God's love together so that we can, because our faith is in Him. Our faith is in Him. Our faithfulness is in God. And so, you know, I told you, I, I, I grew up in a situation where I had to go to church almost. But I want to tell you that when you have love one for another, when you have faith in God, that becomes such a news. And I believe this, that the Redlands will not be the same because of the love we have for one another and because of the faith we have in God. When we understand that, all of a sudden things will be transformed in our own lives. So when Paul says, your faith is growing more and more and the love all of you have for one another is increasing. Well, I've got to tell you, I sense that. I sense it in my spirit that the love for one another is increasing, which to me is a good sign that there is already faith growing in you. You see, we don't just tolerate one another. You know, oftentimes we tolerate each other so we can get something else. But friends, when you have love one for another, you're fulfilling the scripture and you're fulfilling the fact that within us as a group, as a family group, we can do much, much greater things together than we could ever do alone. And so I get so excited when I read in Thessalonians the, uh, the faith, love and hope together. All these three things work together so that we can actually be living a faith-filled life. It continues on here. In, uh, in, uh, it says in verse 4, Therefore among God's churches we boast about your perseverance in faith and all the persecution and trials you are enduring. Well, you just heard one man, Basil, who has been persevering for four years with this cancer. And there are many others that I have already come to know and love who have persevered through all sorts of difficulties. That's the good news, that you've persevered. The bad news is we don't know how long we have to persevere for. But the Bible says, having done everything, after you've done everything, you stand firm and you let nothing move you. You keep doing the work of God because we know that our work in God is never in vain. And I know there are some people here who have been sick for many, many years. You've been fighting of all sorts of things for one reason or other, and I don't quite know why you haven't yet been healed. But tell, I'll tell you, as long as there is breath in me, I will call out. If I get the prompting like we did this morning, I'll, get, I'll, get, I'll just invite you out, anoint you with oil, and we'll persevere with that until the healing comes. Because the fact is that we have a, a, a belief in God that the, guy, the Bible tells us that God wants you and I to be whole. He wants you and I to be healed. He wants you and I to be filled with faith and power so we can do great exploits for Him. He doesn't have plan B. He's only got you and I. And so when we start to believe God, and really, irrespective of what we're going through, it says there that we boast about your perseverance and faith. Well, last year when I was in Hungary, I was boasting about you. Because if you remember last year when I was in Hungary, we had just finished purchasing 563 and we were just about, and I had to leave Judy here so that she could lead the charge to move into 563. And I was just watching it on the pictures on the, on, the, on the computer screen as you were moving. I said, oh, praise God. I'm not, no, I didn't say that. <laughs> uh, I, 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 said, I said, oh, no. And, and the fact is that I could see the amount. And I was praising God that six months before we were paying exorbitant rent and we were moving into this two and a half acre property and we just moved food link in before i left and then the rest of the church was moving into the school and into the uh, um, 563 i'm leaving in a few weeks time to see this next transition go but that's okay <laughs> uh, i i will do some more boasting over there about you 
But the fact is, I was boasting about the faith that you had. I was boasting about the fact that you have tremendous uh, courage and, and belief that you can do this. And so I, I just love the way the Apostle Paul does the same thing. He says, among the churches, we boast about your perseverance and faith in all the persecutions and trials you are enduring. This word trials and, and it, 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 this word has the, uh, the, uh, the Greek word is actually more like the strained. And strained actually means to be overstretched. Anybody feel overstretched here? There's some of us, I'm sure, feel overstretched. And, and sometimes I feel overstretched that you've been pulled beyond what people are seemingly capable of handling. And so we get stretched. And I... I, too, like Tony, love that song, I'm no longer a slave to fear. Well, I've never been a fearful person, but I've been slave to many other things. And so I, I just put another word in there, I'm no longer a slave. And you can put your own word in there, whatever you may be slave to, and say, I am no longer a slave to that because I am a child of God. Hallelujah. Now, if you're not a child of God today, you'll know that. And that would be a difficult song for you to sing. But can I just say that you have a choice to make. If you haven't yet made a decision to follow Jesus, let this Sunday be the Sunday where you make a decision to follow Jesus. It'll transform you. It'll, it'll make a, such a difference in your life. If you open your heart and say, God, I don't know what it's like, but yes, I will make a decision to open my heart and follow you because when you do that it'll transform you it'll 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 just change your life and i, I just wonder about and I, I was really touched when i was talking to basil about some of the things he had to do in the army because you see he was overstretched and we've heard actually many i uh, both Judy and I, we've talked to many people, service people who have been in Afghanistan or Iraq and they come back and they pray, let me tell you. When you're in the trenches, you pray. You got, that's, it, that's all you can do is pray and say, God, I'll put my trust in you. Many of us who have not seen war, we, think, we just see it on a screen. We think you don't sort of feel it as much as when you're in it. And I've got to tell you that I believe this, that we... We need to put ourselves in a situation that we say, God, I need to put my trust in you so that my faith can grow. You see, your faith will not grow while you can write a check out for whatever you want to buy. Your faith will not grow while you can trust in someone that you, you know so well. Your faith will not grow when you are just able to do things in your own strength because you've either learnt it, you've been experiencing it or whatever. And so you can just do it in your own strength and you do not need God. But when you position yourself in a place, and quite frankly we as a church, have positioned ourselves in a, in a place where God we need you, for 563, we need you for 557. We need you, Lord, to build a building so that we can move out of this school and start to move over there. And I can see the rumblings of growth taking place in your life and my life as we take these steps. The different leaders I've been speaking to about doing courses and having a training center and, and doing the things that, that's on our heart to make a difference in our community an absolutely dynamic thing. And, and uh, as a result of that, there will be murmurings around the Redlands. Keep a watch on the rock. There's something happening there. You see, God is involved. God is doing something. It's not so much what we're doing. It's what God is doing. So this whole idea and of course i thought of, i just wrote in a few things that identified areas that cause our faith to be stretched or to be strained or to be to where we need this enduring thing because let me tell you there are certain things that actually test our faith in a sense tribulations it means that tribulations actually means that you have no way out 
But you see, God never puts us in a corner. He always says, whenever you're in a corner, I will always make a way of escape. It's only the devil or our spiritual enemy who puts us in a corner where seemingly there is no way out. But you see, God always makes a way out for us. And so when you seem boxed in, uh, being pressured, uh, being, so this is, this is such a difficult situation that you can be in. Or continuous labor, continuing, you know, where you get blow after blow, you're just about getting up and then you get sideswiped by something else. I was just about to get up and I get pulled over by the police yesterday and say, your car's not registered. Where's that come from? And I'm thinking, you know, devil, I'm not going to let you steal my joy. I'm not going to let you steal my faith because my faith is in God. And okay, it's a problem. Okay, but then you get over this and then all of a sudden, you, next day you find something else. And, and so we're continually, or am I the only one who faces these? Am I, we continually face one thing. You just get over one issue, one child grows up and well, then there comes another child, another grandchild. And, and man, it just, they just keep coming. You know, one trial after the other. And so i got to say to you that we, we've got to make sure that our faith in God is so strong and powerful and, that, uh, and we persevere in that. We persevere. We do not give up. And there are, of course, issues where there is satanic harassment. Now, this talks about the enemy who puts stumbling blocks in our path to slow our progress down. And we've had that in the past. But I thank God that we've got favor with counsel. And counsel's come back to me already to say that, yes, we're happy to enlarge the, the size of that shed. And we're going to be building that. And so already I'm getting signs. So it, as we're speaking, the engineer is drawing up our plans so that we can start to uh, put the application in. My desire was to have the application totally in before I leave for, so that it takes a month or two to get the application happening. So I want to get that all the, already in the way. So when I come back from Hungary, we can already go and say, okay, it's all signed off, sealed and delivered. We can now start to build and start to move ahead. Because remember, our plan is to be in the new place by... By Christmas 2016, not Christmas 2017. And so, so we, we need to stir up the gift of faith. We need to stir up our own souls so that we can actually do. And when you see that the, uh, the workers, what, are they, what have they done uh, on, the, on 563 when you go there, the, the, the fencing project has started and uh, Judy's got 15 people coming and, uh, and uh, doing different projects and the fence and so on. So it really is a... A, a thing that's going on. And I thank God for that because many of you are so busy that you just don't have time to do the work that needs to be done. We don't have the money to pay for it to be done. Isn't that amazing how God supernaturally provides? Have you thought about that? I mean, when you think of the road down the back, how much that would cost? We as a church would not have in that kind of money to put a road down the back to the, the, of the property. And I, I just marvel at God. And I just believe that's God winking at you and I say, you're on the right track. So I say that to encourage you. And so, so when, when you read the scripture that we boast about your perseverance and faith in all the persecutions and trials, well, well, we don't have a lot of persecution, but we have a lot of enduring issues and trials because, and, and these strains, if you like, to our, to our faith. And so we've got to keep believing God for that. And also there's the other, our carnal thinking. Our carnal thinking is the things that we say, well, oh, I'm out of the will of God or I am in the wrong church. I need to go to another church. Let me tell you, the answer is not you going from this church to any other church because every church is the same who loves Jesus Christ. They sing praises. They preach good, the, the word of God. They all have this. They've got different people in them with different giftings and talents and whatever. But let me tell you, every church is the same. Those who, who, who are actually preaching, you know, believe the same sense of beliefs that we have. And so changing churches alone is not the answer. It's about you digging into that well of your salvation and then growing up in God, not just growing old, 
Basil's growing old, but, you know, it, it, it's not just growing old. We've got to grow up in God. Amen. And when we grow up in God, things will happen. You know, so, oh, it's my wife. She's the problem. Oh, it's my husband. He's the problem. You know, it's my children. It's my job. It's my city. Oh, it's too hard here. Friends, when we recognize that we have a faith in God, things will change totally. And I believe that's going to happen. Another issue that can happen is fear. You wake up in the morning and you have a little pain on the side and you say, oh, my appendix, oh, or you have a problem, with, oh, and then you think, oh, I've got this problem, that problem. Listen, don't let fear put strain on your relationship with God. Don't let that happen. Unanswered prayer. How many people, I don't have to put your hand up, but many people here, I'm sure, like me, have prayed a prayer and you think, God, where's the answer? I'm waiting still for my answer. You know, we just think we flick up a prayer, God, and it's going to come next week. But you see, God is more interested in you than you just getting what you want from God. He's interested in you becoming a man or a woman of faith and power so you can do great exploits in his name. I'll tell you one thing that really puts a real strain on faith and that is unresolved conflicts with close relationships. And that's in the natural family, in church life it could happen, unresolved conflicts. I'll tell you if there's any conflict in this house, get it fixed straight away. Don't wait. It's not going to go away by itself. But the fact is that when you have unresolved conflict, if you want something to strain your faith, then get a good offense going with somebody that you really like. And then you'll find how strained faith can be. And I, I just think that offense is the, is the work of the enemy. It tries to steal your joy, kill relationships, destroy your work with the, the, the thing that you're doing. Because it's guaranteed to ruin your faith if you have an offense with somebody. Go up to them. The Bible says, if I've got a problem, quite frankly, we operate like that. We don't talk amongst the elders. If I've got a problem with you, I just come to you and say, I've got a problem. Can you help me? And I think that's what you should do. Don't try and say, oh, well, it'll go away. It's like every other illness. It won't go away until you do something about it. And so I think it's absolutely vital that we don't allow these things to hinder the faith that God has given you and I. I'll tell you one of the things that also puts stress or strain on your faith, and that is if you're lacking in the Word of God in your life. If you don't read, we, we, tell, we, we encourage you to read your Bible daily. There is a Bible reading plan at the back. If you haven't got one yet, Take one and get it ready so that you can have your Bible reading plan happening. I gave mine away to somebody, so I don't have mine in my Bible, but normally it's in my Bible. And so I, I think it's vital that we have a daily reading plan and we feed ourselves daily because the Bible is very clear. In fact, if you, I think in verse 10, 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 10, they say, it says this, they perish, I think this is on the on the on the screen as well, verse 10. They perish because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. See, the truth is what? The God's, word, God's word is the truth. Jesus says, I am the life, I am the way, I am the truth and the life. And the truth is here. This is what truth is. Don't let anybody give you some kind of a theology or philosophy and say, this is truth, this is the truth. You know, we've taught our children, if somebody tells you something, you say, well, can you give me a verse a chapter and verse on that. If they can't give you a chapter and, and even then it needs to be in context, it needs to be uh, pro properly uh, uh, examined. But the fact is, you've got to have, this is the Word of God that gives us the truth. And that will, you see, in Colossians 3.16, <coughs> uh, excuse me, I guess. Colossians 3.16 says this, let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. There are other scriptures in Romans 10 verse 17. Faith comes by hearing and hearing 
by the Word of God. You see, I said last week that when you read the Logos, then from the Logos you get a rhema. And you can do great things when you get a word from God, a rhema from God, a rhema word from God. You don't often get a rhema unless you read the word of God. People want to hear from God and so on and say, yeah, but I go to church. Well, just because you go to church doesn't make you a Christian any more than if you uh, stand in your garage, you're not going to become a car. The fact is that, the fact is that you've got to, you've got to, You've got to read the Word of God and then let the Word of God change you and transform you. It says there in Revelations 12, 11 that we, they triumph, they meaning us Christians, we triumph by the blood of the Lamb and the Word of our testimony. So you've got to watch what you say. You've got to be careful with the words you say. Many people say careless words. And have you ever known that when you say a careless word, it goes out and says, oh, I shouldn't have said that. Now, if you say that on TV, a careless word, it goes out. Millions of people can hear it and you don't know where it goes from there. You can just say it one on one. It's maybe not as, not as bad. But the fact is that we should not let a word, a careless word, just f flow out of our mouths. That's not the right thing to do. So I wonder if the musicians can come back. We're going to sing a song as I close. Because I believe this, that as you understand grounding yourself in faith, let me tell you another problem with sometimes people have is a result of believing in your experience more than in God and His Word. You see, people say, well, I've, you've had experience. Well, you're, you know, you're, you know, you're, mature in age and you've experienced lots of things. And lots of experience is a wonderful thing, let me tell you. But the thing that really helps your faith is the Word of God and, and trusting in God. Because when you experience the presence of God, like we did this morning during worship, I mean, it's amazing how, and the, and the, and the presence of God is not just down here at the front, it's all over this building. What I love about the fact is that, you know, Billy, you can sense the, the presence of God right where you're sitting and the person next to you may not even feel it. Or maybe you can, no, you can see the, you can sense God's love and power where you're standing and the person in front of you or behind you may not. It's the amazing thing is because it's where we are positioned individually. Where we are positioned individually. You know, I, I believe that God wants to speak to each, many of us, maybe individually, but corporately, definitely. But God wants to get your attention somehow. And sometimes to get your attention, He has to point something out to you. Because sometimes we, we, we just get into a routine and we don't realize that God is wanting to change us, shape us, mold us, fashion us. He loves us.